Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to have a run through a lot of quick little ideas to help make your jetty experience even more enjoyable. There's nothing too in-depth, nothing difficult, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each one explaining them, just show them and the basic settings to get them done. As before, there will be a timeline in chapters along the bottom of the screen if you hover your mouse there so you can quickly find the bits you need to if you come back. But why not watch it all? Because a lot of people tell me they still find out things they didn't know when they watch my videos through. This model here is the Robin 200 series. It's painted up to represent the one I used to fly at the Cotswold Aero Club. Hence its little name badge down there and the interesting registration that it had. If you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe and press the notification bell? That way you'll get told whenever I publish any new ones. And don't worry, it's not going to keep annoying you with notifications because I don't publish them very often nowadays. And of course, if you really enjoy it, you can leave a super thanks to help keep me in espressos and chocolate biscuits. So without further ado, let's get on with it. A variety of programming ideas to make your jetty transmitter a more enjoyable experience. And we'll start with an idea for a sort of little logbook for your model. If you look at the right hand side of this screen you can see there's a timer that shows how long this flight has lasted. There's a lifetime timer. How long has this model flown for its entire lifetime? Then there's a motor run time. That's how long the motor has run on this flight. And finally, uh, a number of flights that this model has made in its lifetime. The first three are the standard jetty timers, just with the correct settings. And the, the flight counter is a little Lua app from RC-Thoughts, and it's available on Jetty Studio. There is another flight counter Lua app that I know of from Thorn and Klaus. And so if you just Google Thorn and Klaus jetty apps, you can find it. They have a nice little double box one which counts the number of flights today as well as the number of flights in total lifetime. Let's have a little look at how this works. This is an electric powered model. So we pop into the uh, timers. You've got three of them. This flight is a free running timer. And what starts it off is just the throttle stick above a certain value. Let's have a look at that. See if the throttle goes above 62%, it switches it on. It's free running, which means that once it's switched on, it keeps running until you press the F4 stop button at the end of the flight. And the report type voice. The motor runtime is the same sort of thing, but it's standard. That means that whenever the P4 switch switches on and off, the timer will stop, unlike free running, which will keep going. And that's why it's able to clock the total motor runtime as the throttle's open and closed. And lifetime. Uh, again, on the throttle, free running, just like the this flight, flight time. But the important thing here is the reset type is a long reset. What's the difference? Well, the other timers default to a reset type of short reset. Now, a short reset will reset back to zero when you switch the transmitter off and on. A long reset will not. And that's how we're able to build up the lifetime flight timer. But if you do want to zero it, just press the clear button and hold it down for two or three seconds. That's a long reset. That will clear it and that'll set it back to zero. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. If you do need to clear anything out, just a short press of clear will not reset the long full lifetime button. And the RCT flight counter, nice little Lua app. As I say, it's there on Jetty Studio. It allows you to select a switch. Be careful what you select as a switch for the flight counter. Uh, on an electric model, it might be simply um, moving your throttle cut switch from cut to run. Uh, it could be on a timer. 
Um, but beware that it's not something you'll be doing in the pits or in the workshop regularly and therefore clocking up the flights. And the minimum time is how many seconds that has to have been true for it to actually then clock the full light. So you've got a chance there, um, if you know you're going to be regularly toggling the switch, to set some value to prevent it uh, just counting a flight. And uh, if you install it and you happen to know how many flights you've done on a model before uh, you installed this, you can manually set a number in there to get it started or you can go back and correct it if you realise in the workshop you've been messing about and suddenly it's counted 50 flights. Um, something I do with the switch, for example, on uh, my Schleicher K18 glider, which is not electric powered, it's aero tow only, I use the tow release as the timer start. But sometimes I have to mess about with it on the ground trying to get the cable in and the, the um, release to actually catch it. So I set quite a long minimum time there, like 30 seconds, so that the tow release has to have been opened for 30 seconds before it'll count a flight. Because if I'm messing about on the ground trying to get it to engage on the cable, it's not going to be open for 30 seconds. It's only going to be open for a few seconds. And there you are. There is a little logbook for your model. Now, if you have a DS transmitter, which has the built-in gyros, you can get that to help you get your information. For instance, on all my thermal gliders, I have this. Just tilt it towards me. Timer, zero seconds. And it tells me how long I've been up flying. My good friend John McNamara of jetstream.co.uk, who sells Jetty and other fine brands, uh, mentioned this lovely idea to me. To switch the telemetry screens, uh, particularly on the ground during things like turbine startup, multiple turbines, watching any of your data, just tilt the transmitter instead of having to go for the left-right buttons. For example, if we tilt to the right, switching screens. And that's the last one. And tilt to the left will take you back through the screens. How do you do that? Uh, well, let's go in here. Timer sensors. Output to start. Oh, come on. Voice output to start with. The timer. This flight. The switch is GY. So you go here. And when you go to assign a switch, you would press the plus button. Come down to accelerometers. We'll see that in a second. And set switch. Uh, y is the one that tilts towards you. And you just have to set the necessary switch on point in the usual manner, press the rev if needs be, so that as you tilt it up towards you, when it gets to a certain point... Timer, zero seconds. See that? Timer, zero seconds. And I shall show you how to do it for the display screens. Go to main screen. Here you can see I've set switch to following page, with GX. So let's show you how to switch to the previous page, and then we'll go back. So go into there, press plus, accelerometer. If you're wondering which one is which, just tilt the whole transmitter and you'll see suddenly it switches Timer, through. Zero seconds. There's the Y one come on. If we tilt it to the left, we'll see that X has come on there. So it's X that we want, the X axis. And uh, you can Tilt it if you want and press this button at the correct point. I happen to want it at minus 30 because we're using plus 30 for a tilt to the right. But that's switched on. We don't want that because it's saying switch on to the right of that point and switch off to the left. So if we reverse it, it'll switch on when it gets to the left of that point. Let me show you. Switched on, switched off. Say OK to that. And now we can change screen by tilting left and change screen by tilting right. Very handy, see, on the ground getting things set up and running. There are some things that are uh, in common demands I have for data when I'm flying on a spring switch. And I replaced the two position sw spring switch that comes with the sets for a three position spring switch that you can buy. Uh, so it's centred 
and if you pull it towards you or push it away, it'll spring back. But if you wish, you can just use the two position and use another switch for something else. Let's have a look at what I do. In timer sensors, the voice output. In single voice announcements, it is where you can get the Q value. And it's the Q that bothers me, not the A value. A value is how loud it's getting a signal, but Q is how much of the data it's getting. That's the one I want. So I can just... Signal, zero. At any point during the flight, especially when the model's a long way away from me and make sure everything's going okay. Uh, I don't tend to use the trigger switch anymore because you can set multiple things in there, but whenever you pull the trigger switch, it's going to read out all of them and I only wanted one. So that's where I use um, a Lua app from Dave McQueenie. Uh, you'll find it in Jetty Studio if you've put the link to his um, repository in it. And uh, it is called uh, DFM hyphen SWT, which stands for switch, but it will then come through with this name, the short long switch. And the reason for that, golly, look at the number of Lua apps I run. Crikey, okay, anyway. Uh, that's the spring switch pulled the other way. Zero. And the great thing about this is one press will give you that one, two presses gives you that, three gives you that, and a long press gives you that, so... Zero. Zero. Speed, zero. Zero. And it generally it will tell you um, feet milliamp hours etc if when it's actually running everything one that i do like to run is here we come back to it voice output when i'm using a thermal solder as this one is i do like to run the repeat switch when i've switched into thermal mode uh, 10 seconds, roughly the time to do a turn, depends on the individual glider. Some are a bit more, some are a bit less. And what I get it to repeat is the height. There we are, altitude set in there. And that's because the Vario is busy telling me we're going up. And if you're in a booming thermal, yeah, fine, you, you know you're going up. But if you're scratching around in, in weak lift, it's coming and going, um... And so at some points in the turn, the Vario tells you you're going up. Some points it's neutral or going down. You're never quite sure if you're actually making a net gain in height. And therefore, when as soon as I switch to thermal mode, it will start telling me the height every so many seconds. And if I'm in weak and scratchy lift, I can then tell if I'm actually gaining a few feet and it's worth sticking with it or if I'm getting nowhere or losing and it's worth leaving.